Okay, welcome back to FTL. We're doing a tutorial playthrough with the starting ship, the Kestrel, and we are about to take on the enemy flagship. Alright, and this is where the difficulty of the game ramps up significantly, even on easy mode. Uh, you will probably lose more runs in this last boss fight than everywhere else combined. Uh, the enemy flagship is really, really powerful. The first thing it does is cloak, which is super annoying. Fortunately, this gives us some time to get set up. We don't need our med bay right away, so I can power that off and turn down my engine power by one. That way I can power both defense drones. Defense drones are very important to this fight. Uh, you can beat the rubble flagship without them, but it's very difficult, and you'll see why in a minute. Now that it's decloaked, we can get a better look at its systems. You can see it has four weapons, and these are all triple shot weapons. It'll fire three ion blasts, three heavy lasers, three missiles, and a very powerful beam weapon. Of these four, the missile launcher is by far the biggest threat, because like all missile launchers, it ignores your shields. So you want to make disabling that your top priority. The best way I've found to do that is not to use weapons if you don't have to but to have a boarding party teleport into that room and disable it that way. You can see that room is cut off from the rest of the ship, so once we take out that crew member and disable the launcher, they won't be able to repair it. So the first thing I always do if I have a crew teleporter is send people on there to deal with that. You can see it's got a lot of other crew, so and a big med bay, so sending a boarding party into other parts of the ship is very, very risky. You probably won't be able to take out all of their crew and keep the med bay disabled for long enough to make it worth the threat. You can see it's fired three missiles at once. I'm going to cloak to dodge those, and thankfully the defense drones shot all of those down, but if I hadn't cloaked, one of them still might have gotten through. With all of my weapons queued up, it's time to focus on their shields. To do that, I'm going to target the Ion Bomb and see if that hits. It does, which takes out two of their shielding. I'm going to target the shields again with both of my Burst Lasers and queue up the Halberd Beam so that if the Burst Lasers take down the rest of the shields, the Halberd Beam can deal a whole bunch of damage. There we go. We can see that even though the ship cloaked, I already had the Halberd Beam targeted, so it's still hit. Beam weapons never miss, which is another reason they're so good. With that damage done, it's time to detarget all of our weapons except the Ion Bomb, and wait for them to fully charge before I fire another salvo. Alright, my Mantis have disabled the missile launcher, which means I can bring them back. You do not want to leave your boarding party on board the rebel ship, because if you destroy it with them on board, you lose them. And if you've watched some of my other videos, I've done that a couple times, and it's unfortunate. The other weapons the flagship has are nasty, but if you've got fully upgraded shields, they're not actually that much of a threat. And with all of our weapons queued up and their shields down, we should be able to do a lot of damage to this guy before he can cloak again. There we go, took him down in two salvos, and didn't even take any damage. Um, <laughs> I made that look a lot easier than it normally is, especially if you haven't put 200 hours into the game like I have, but uh, that first form can still be challenging. And that's right, this final boss fight has not one, but three different forms that you have to deal with before you can beat the game. Uh, it's jumped away, so we're going to take this time to heal up our border, and then with him all set, we are ready to chase it. Alright, now we get to the second form. Scans indicate that it has redirected considerable power to its drones. That's an understatement. In my opinion, this is by far the hardest fight of the game, the second form. Um, it's just very difficult, even with a fully powered ship like mine. And you'll see why in a minute. First thing I'm going to do is pause, turn my defense drones back on. I'm 
going to send my borders over to disable that missile launcher again. You can see it's lost some of its systems, but it's repaired anything else that you've damaged. And as you can also see, the flagship has launched a defense drone of your own. So if you were relying on missile weapons to do damage up until this point, you would be in deep trouble because it would be able to shoot down your incoming missiles. We don't have that problem with our current armament, though, which is one of the reasons I tend not to use missile weapons for very long. And another thing that you might be able to see, yeah, right there, is the flagship is sending in boarding drones. These will try to crash into your ship, and if they hit, they'll punch a hole in the hull and start attacking your systems and crew. They're a huge pain to deal with because they don't do a ton of damage, but they have a lot of health and they take a very long time to disable. And the entire time, the room that they're in is losing air thanks to the hole they've punched in your hull. Uh, the boarding drones are good for shoot- uh, rather, the defense drones are good for shooting them down on their way in, but they do miss sometimes. And, for instance, I don't think they'll be able to get this one before it goes down. Yep, he landed right in our teleporter room. So I'm gonna have to send some guys over there to take him out before I can bring my boarding party home. All this time, of course, I'm waiting for my weapons to recharge so I can actually damage the enemy ship. We took out their shields there, so I'm going to target my burst lasers with the shielding as well. And this time, I'm going to target my halberd beam so that it disables their drone control. That way, the enemy drone will still be there and we'll still have to take it out, but at least it won't be shooting back for a little while. Because we upgraded our uh, teleporter, even though it's been slightly damaged, we can still bring our boarding party home. They'll just teleport into other rooms of our ship instead. And that's good, because now we can send them to deal with the drone instead of my other crew, so they'll take it out more quickly. And here we see a warning saying power search detected. This is your cue that the enemy ship is about to launch its super attack which in this case is a huge swarm of attack drones that'll surround your ship for a little while. And really the only way you can negate this is to cloak when they all appear. You can see they all showed up, that would have done a lot of damage, except that uh, once again I made it look a little bit easier than it really is. I destroyed the flagship before they could actually do anything. So we've destroyed the ship, we get a decent reward, and a weapon drop, surprisingly. That doesn't happen very often with the flagship. And the enemy ship jumps away, which frees us up to make some repairs and get everybody healed up. I'm going to power up my medbay once, just so they heal up a little bit faster. The more power you put into your medbay, the more quickly it will heal up your crew, which is nice. Alright, we are ready to move on to the final fight. Before we do that, I'm just going to spend the last of our scrap, because why not? And here we go. Now this last fight, the enemy ship has one more trick up its sleeve. It's powered up a supercharged Sultan energy shield. Like all the other ones, this will block all incoming shots until we can take it down. Thankfully, we've got some very good weapons for taking down Zoltan shields. They've also sent in at least one enemy boarding party, but because we've upgraded our doors all the way, we can have them get stuck in an airless room for a little while. And before those missiles come in, I need to remember to turn on my defense drones and hopefully shoot a couple of them down. You'll notice I'm not cloaking to dodge them because I need to save that cloak for, you guessed it, another possible incoming enemy super attack. That one missile got through and put a breach in my hull, but my Engie can go ahead and fix that. And I've got to heal up my boarding party. I've got another enemy boarder over there, but I can do the same thing with him and just choke him out. My first ion bomb apparently missed, so I should probably use my burst lasers to take down some of that Zoltan shield. And that was the final form super attack. It shoots out like nine heavy lasers all at once. And once again, the only thing you can really do to nullify that is to cloak. 
Um, otherwise, you just have to hope that you can dodge some of them. Alright, we've almost got the super shield down, which means once that's down, I'll be able to teleport over and disable the missile launcher, which I'm going to do now. And you can see how much multitasking I'm having to do here. I'm having to monitor my ship, the enemy ship, the enemy crew, my crew, my weapons, all sorts of stuff is going on all at once. Thankfully, we've got a really nice weapon set up, so it shouldn't actually take too long to take out the enemy ship by the time we actually get through its shields, which should be right now. And you can see how quickly I'm pausing and unpausing to deal with the various incoming threats. But the enemy ship is basically dead in the water, that halberd beam takes it out, and we've won! And there you go, that is how I play FTL. Um, we got pretty lucky on that run with the weapon drops, um, and I definitely made that last fight look a lot easier than it really is. Um, just because I've done it so many times and we had such a powerful setup. Um, but yeah, that is a pretty good walkthrough, I think, of how I play the game and the strategies I've used. Hopefully you have found that informative and entertaining, and I will catch you guys next time.